Okay, so this should be the next scene. The bait express is down. I'm going to make a new save state. This time. The morning comes too soon on the heels of a sleepless night. Is this how Emmy's been spending her nights? Staring at the wall or ceiling trying to stop thinking about whatever it is. Her, in my case. That clenched feeling in my gut is still there. I can't rely on you. Words spoken so casually, almost like she were teasing me or chastised me for suggesting that the earth is flat. What do you mean the earth's not flat? <laughs> That's how it's got to be. The way it's got to be sucks. I'm feeling so miserable that I ne very nearly decided to skip the run. That would be stupid though, it's not something I should do just to see her. Sure, that was the original reason, but it's something more now. I started to enjoy the running itself. There are worse ways to get the blood flowing, anyway. Never thought I'd say that after the first week or so, but I feel a lot better after I run. Like, no matter what else I do today, I've at least done that one thing. It wakes me up, too, and Emmy herself said that running always clears her mind. Maybe it'll help clear mine. I hope so. The morning is cool and clear, if a bit humid. Summer's making itself known, it seems. Emmy's already stretching out when I arrive and greets me with a smile and a wave. Hey, Sal. The sight of her so chipper is like a kick in the nuts. How can she be so happy after yesterday? I give a halfway and surprise to receive a hug. Hey, about last night. Here it comes. The breakup? I wanted to say thanks. What? I actually managed to get some sleep for the first time in a while, and I think it's because of our talk. So, thanks. How could she sleep better after our chat? She basically told me that she wouldn't get any closer to me. And that let her sleep well? Excuse me, but what the hell? Emmy either doesn't notice my bafflement or chooses not to notice. No telling with her anymore. Oh, no problem. Glad it helped. The venom that threatens to drip into my voice control for now. But I think I'd better start running now before I do anything stupid. Emmy seems equally willing to get started. And before long we're darting around the track. I can tell she feels more relaxed. Her running has gone back to the more graceful movements I remember from when I first watched her. It's a stark contrast to the almost brutal way she's been hurling herself around the track these past few days. Our talk really does seem to have helped her. A pity it couldn't help me. I get into the rhythm of the running, thinking back to when I couldn't afford thinking about anything else but keeping my breathing steady and legs moving. Guess those days are gone. At least for the first couple of laps. Annoyed at the lack of success I'm having with clearing my head, I increase the pace. Ah, there's the burning sensation in my legs. The breast come ra the breast coming ragged in my chest, the pounding in my heart, which I still need to be careful about. But it does seem to have gotten stronger. I can feel it pumping blood through my veins. The sound thrums in my ears, but instead of being panicked as I was that day in the snow, I'm filled with elation. I'm instead filled with elation. Yes, it's working. My heart, a fatal flaw that landed me here, has improved. I'm able to keep going now, and maybe one day I'll be able to stop worrying as much. Right now, it doesn't matter what that I have. Right now, it doesn't matter that I have no idea what to do about Emmy and me. All that matters is that my arms and legs need to pump in concert with one another. Nothing else. As I hit the final stretch, I remind myself that running really does help, but not as much as I'd hoped. I do feel better, and as I walk a few laps to cool down, I begin to remember last night in a slightly less emotional manner. Emmy wants me to stay distant from her. I can't bring myself to do so. There's got to be a way around this. Some kind of middle ground I can reach. Not sure what that middle ground is, though. Damn, I was almost feeling optimistic. Nice run, Hassel. You've really improved. Nice run. That's all I can hope for now, isn't it? Congratulations, Hassel. You're pathetic. I gotta change my attitude. Well, you know, I am pretty awesome. And yet, I just keep saying things that I don't mean. Any second now, I'll be as good at hiding my problems as any is. I like to think so. Why does she do this to me? Say something like that with such real affection in her voice that it makes my heart leap. She doesn't mean it. She can't. I must be doing a worse job than I thought because Emmy peers closely at me. Hey, you feeling okay? Maybe we should get to the nurse, huh? Yeah, I'd hate to kill over on you. Emmy looks a little shocked at my bitter tone. Don't say things like that. You've already done it once before, you know. Why does she act so affectionate? He doesn't really care. I thought she made that clear. But despite all that, I find myself apologizing, even though I shouldn't have to. 
Even though she's probably just putting on an act. Sorry. Yeah. Come on, let's see the nurse. I can't get myself to calm down the whole time. Every time it feels like I've gotten over what happened last night, Emmy does something or says something that shows affection, and I'm back to the beginning. The image of her ending that conversation haunts me. It was like the final twist of the knife that left me feeling bereft of any hope that Emmy and I could be more than what we were. What does bereft mean? Bereft. Deprived of or lacking something, or sad and lonely, especially through someone's death or departure. And what are we at this point? A little more than friends who happen to fuck. And really, it's not like I don't enjoy the time I spend with her. I said so the other day myself. I very nearly didn't even bring anything up with her. We are just going to hop in, on in there and let it ride, wasn't I? With this running through my head, I find myself in front of the nurse's office, still brooding as he checks out Emmy. Emmy comes bounding out of the door, gives me a kiss, and darts off to the shower, I assume. Meanwhile, the nurse beckons me into his office to give me the ritual once over. Any problems today? Nah, I even pushed a little harder today than I have in the past, and I seem able to handle it. That's uncharacteristically risky coming from you, Hassel. You've been hanging out with Emmy too much, she's rubbed off on you, and not necessarily in a good way. At the mention of Emmy's name, I can't help but frown unhappily in spite of my efforts at control. Well now, this is new, don't you think? Last I checked, the usual response to Emmy's name was a grin, not a frown. What exactly happened between you two? Because Emmy doesn't seem to be in on it, whatever it is. She looked more relaxed than I've seen her in weeks, which is unusual for this time of, of the year. What do you mean by that? By what? For this time of year. I keep trying to find out what's been bothering her, but she clams up since I broached the subject. Then last night she said, let me guess, she won't tell you because she says she can't trust you. And now you're crushed because you thought that the two of you were so much more than she seems to think, right? Er, more or less. How the heck did you know? Hassel, I'm the nurse. It's my job to know these things. Plus, I've known Annie for too long, for long enough to know that she'd try to do something like this. It's just like her. Plus, I've known Emmy for long enough to know that she'd try to do something like this. It's just like her. He says this in the sort of half affectionate, half frustrated tone that would seem more appropriate if he had a cigarette dang and clink from his lips. As it is, he seems willing to make do with a pen. I open my mouth to respond, but knocking sound of the door interrupts me. Hey, you guys still in there? Just a moment, Emmy. Give us a second to get her pants back on. The door bursts open and Emmy glares knives at the nurse. Asshole. Didn't mean to get your hopes up. Hey, can we leave me out of this? Anyway, what's up, Emmy? Forgot something? I try to take a more cheerful tone with her. No need to upset her. Two can play the everything's fine game. Actually, I forgot to ask you something. Oh, what's that? Do you want to come with me on a trip to my house? My mom is making dinner and I thought you might want to join us. Well, of course, I accept. And he punches the nurse in the arm playfully. Not you, idiot. You were over last week. I was talking to Hassel. Oh, how interesting. Meeting the parent. I'd love to go, Emmy. Thanks. The nurse raises an eyebrow but says nothing. Great, I'll be in my room. Swing by after you shower and change into something clean and we'll grab the bus. Sounds good. I'll see you in a bit. This time it's me who leans in for a quick kiss before darting off to my room. What an, what an interesting development. Maybe we're getting closer after all. Maybe Emmy's finally ready to open up a little. Or maybe she's just being polite and a free meal seems like a good way to apologize for last night. Great, now I can't decide whether to be excited, nervous, or depressed. I settle for a combination of all three and hop in the shower. <laughs>